Welcome to the Belmont Journal, Belmont's source for hyperlocal news and community updates. I'm Mike Crowley, your host this week. Belmont High School made Niche.com's list of the top 100 schools in Massachusetts. Belmont High ranks 9 out of 332 for best college prep public high schools in Massachusetts. Belmont High also ranks 11 out of 347 for best public high schools in Massachusetts. Further, Belmont High ranks 22 out of 255 for best high schools for STEM in Massachusetts. Niche.com ranks more than 100,000 schools across the country based on various statistics and reviews. You can find out more at Niche.com. This past Monday, January 20th, was the annual Martin Luther King Jr. Breakfast sponsored by Belmont Against Racism and held at the Belmont High School. We have some highlights for you. So the topic that I want to talk about today is, you know, what does Dr. Martin Luther King have to teach us about immigrants' rights? He says, you know, I absolutely think that we need to obey just laws. But when a law is unjust, we actually have a moral duty to disobey those laws. And he draws a distinction between unjust laws, which degrade the human personality, and just laws, which uplift the human personality. I'm sure we can all think of examples of ways in which immigrants have been treated in a degrading manner. Family separation at the border is one very important example. Um, people who have been detained as families, people who are detained in literal ice boxes, right? So there's lots of examples of degrading treatment. But I think that Dr. King would want us to go a little bit further than just thinking about the degrading treatment. I think he would want us to think about the laws that allow that degrading treatment to happen. And there are basically two laws that are allowing this to happen. One is the criminalization of entering the country without authorization. The other is this default of detention that we have in the immigration system. And I think that Dr. King would look at those two laws and say, these are not laws that uplift the human personality. These are laws that degrade because what these laws do is it looks at the people who are coming to the United States and it says, these folks are inferior. We are all in a network of mutuality with our migrant sisters and brothers who come from places, whether they come legally or not. And it is our charge to ensure that our destiny is more just than the one that we were handed. Thank you very much. We all come from somewhere. Welcome to This Week in the Citizen Herald, and we have with us Joanna Jubilis, Senior Multimedia Journalist with the Citizen Herald. Welcome back, Joanna. Always a pleasure, Mike. So let's talk about the McLean Perspective Development. Yes, so I'm going to give you an update on that because we haven't talked about it in a while. Okay. But the planning board public hearings have begun. Mm -hmm. They had their first one this past week. And basically, people have the opportunity to provide input before this goes to town meeting. There is a draft of a zoning amendment bylaw okay. for what's called Zone 3 at McLean. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know the history, the town uh, has an agreement with McLean that was established back in it, it uh, 1999. So it goes back over 20 years. That's right. So anything that gets built there, we, we basically have a say in, which mm -hmm. is good. It's currently zoned for what was approved by town meeting way back in 2001. Was a, it's actually zoned for what was called then a continuing care development with 482 units and okay. a research and development facility that was about 150,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. Long story short, the developer never built it because he ran out of money 
and now there is no longer a need for this kind of a development. So what happened is McLean was like, we have this land, let's, let's develop it. Northland Residential, which is a developer that built the townhouses that are currently on the McLean property known as the Woodlands. Okay. They had a proposal back in March that they brought forward but it was not received favorably by the town because it did not have enough affordable units. It only had nine affordable units. What they mm -hmm. wanted to build was kind of like the Woodlands townhouses, what they were calling uh, age-restricted, you know, trying to appeal to the 55-plus uh, market, and it just didn't go over well. So they went back to the drawing board, but this time they met with people from the Housing Trust and people in the community were very knowledgeable about what the town is looking for with affordable housing and sustainability. Okay. And they have a new plan, which is being received favorably. And what it is, is to build 40 age-restricted townhouses, again, appealing to the 55-plus people. Okay, so it's 55-plus. And 104 apartments that are not age-restricted. Mm -hmm. And altogether, total, I believe there's 26 affordable apartments and um, I think it's uh, six affordable townhouses which comes to 32 total affordable units. So that's a significant increase in affordable units for yeah. the town. Yes. So at the first public hearing there was a lot of positive remarks mm -hmm. about it but then there were some people that would like to see um, more age restrictions in the apartments like Marianne Scali commented she'd mm -hmm. like to see more age restrictions in the apartments that are being offered. What, what, what would be the reasons to to increase the... Um... Well, here, here it is. It's a lot of seniors who feel like they're, they're being pushed out of Belmont because the taxes have gone up so much and it's hard okay. to stay in town. They want to stay in town. So this is going to be a very appealing development for people who want to stay in town. All right. Someone else like Ellen, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, who's chairman of the uh, Land Management Committee, she said she would like to see preference given to people who live in Belmont and who work in Belmont. So there is a 16-page draft of this bylaw amendment. It's available on the So people can find this website. on, on the, the planning board's website. Right. Okay. Take a look at it. Come to the next hearing. It's February 4th and provide your feedback. And there's a lot in there. I mean, it's talking about everything from parking requirements, uh, parking for bicycles, mm -hmm. uh, electric charging stations. They, they really want to make it a green facility. Well, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Joanna. And we look forward, of course, to hearing more about the project. You're welcome. Thank you. What was once Olin's Bakery in Cushing Square is now Essential Salon. The salon has moved from their Trapello Road location to Common Street. Joanna Juvelis has the explanation. Welcome to Essential Salon. This is our new location, 456 Common Street in Belmont, and we are officially open. Hi, my name is Jessica Hilaire. I'm a stylist and a makeup artist here. I've been with Essentials for about eight years, and um, I'm very excited to be working in the new spot. I think here we have our um, sitting area where our guests come in, check in at the front desk, and they can lounge and our comfy couches. Here we have our kitchen. We have our refrigerator, dishwasher, sink. Um, we'll have some snacks from time to time, coffee, tea, water, soda, um, and wine occasionally. <laughs> and we're walking into our makeup area here with our vanity. We have yet to stock it, but clients can come and finish up if they'd like, if they're not receiving a blow dryer or any finish time and they can um, zhuzh up their hair or do their own makeup. And here we have our washroom and our color bar where our clients can be seen relaxing back, reclining, and enjoying themselves. I think it's a lot more visible to um, the patrons uh, shopping on Common Street. I also think being closer to the restaurants and a lot of the majority of the businesses business, businesses nearby is going to be fantastic. Um, just a lot more window space, very wide open, um, where we were tucked back a little bit on Trapella Road. Oh, I think that it's so nice and bright and I love all the hardwood and everything. It's just very good aesthetically. It's really beautiful spot, beautiful place. The other one was, it, it was in a, it was in a house and it was, you know, 
I, I thought it was awesome and it was very, very used for what it was, but I think that this is just top of the line as good as it gets. That's, that's, there's no really other way to describe it. This is beautiful. <laughs> Do you know what used to be here? Yes, it used to be Olin's. I've come from, I've been in Belmont for years. And I was, grew up in Belmont. Used to be Olin's. Missed that very much. Hoping it, I was hoping it would come back. But this is great. This is fine. I hope they really prosper. I think they will. Welcome to This Week in the Belmontonian, our weekly segment with Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian. How are you, Franklin? Just fine, thank you. All right. Well, let's talk about traffic improvements or, or mitigation or work that's being done at Concord Avenue at Mill Street and Winter. That's right. Uh, this has been, for many years, this has been a uh, contentious place because it has a, uh, a number of accidents and is potential accidents, uh, uh, especially uh, when you're thinking about coming off of um, Mill Street onto Concord Avenue and then going mm -hmm. down Winter. This is basically the, 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 uh, the street from, let's say, uh, Concord Avenue from Belmont Center to the Lexington and also Mill Street connecting into Concord Avenue that goes down Concord Avenue and then Winter Street. It's, it's, but it's, it, it basically there's, there's, it, it's, it's a very high speed. Okay. There's a potential for really bad accidents. And you see a lot of, um, it, it, traffic is just uh, very hard to get through there. There's also a concern about pedestrians in the area, right? That's right. It's just a place that needs improvement. Uh -huh. So uh, what's happened is that uh, I think it may have been two years ago when, when the town uh, first uh, suggested uh, looking at it. There have been a couple of, uh, of uh, meetings with the residents um, who expressed concern that there might be too much change. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, there were uh, three alternatives that were uh, looked at uh, by the uh, 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 Office of Community Development, the engineering department. Uh, Glenn Clancy, who is the head of that, uh, and um, uh, the company, um, the, the consultant uh, firm uh, VHB, uh, designed three, three plans. One was two rotaries, one was two T, sto uh, T stops, okay. um, and uh, they came with an alternative plan that they think would work. And what it would do is that on the on the western end where uh, Winter Street is, they'll have a rotary. So Bas but basically, it's slow traffic down okay. that, that's going from Lexington or going into Lexington. Mm -hmm. um, then you'll have uh, a more uh, more standardized uh, and and cleaner, I think, design on um, the Mill Street and Concord Avenue. Okay. And it, it, right now, it, it's it's you know free flowing, <laughs> to say the least. And this one would 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 basically make the uh, the the entry into um, uh, Concord Avenue a stop. You would have to you'd have to stop. Unlike now, where you can just go right through, you know, okay. right through onto Concord Avenue. So basically, the the, the improvements remove some of the ambiguity for drivers. Exactly. Who... This makes it a plan. This makes it really something that um, uh, drivers can can can. There's there's no leeway. You know, basically, the one thing that that uh, people are worried about is that. Um, uh, the Rock Meadow uh, uh -huh. land, they'll have to take a little bit of that, but it's not really deep into it. It's more of the, uh, more of the side mm -hmm. road on uh, Rock Meadow. Um, but other than that, it, apparently this is a, uh, a plan that um, uh, the town believes it can um, move forward with. All right, so, so and that's the plan right now. We're going to move forward with, with these improvements. Yeah, well, it'll, for, it'll have to go through meetings and, and, and oh, everything. Oh, so there are more meetings. More, well, it's Belmont. <laughs> <laughs> so many more meetings. Right, exactly. All right. So um, I think we were also going to talk about service animals. Yeah, that's right. We, uh, 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 as you know, as a member of the uh, school committee, mm -hmm. um, uh, there were there wasn't a policy for service animals simply because there wasn't any requests. This year, there's a request by one person for a service animal. So what the what what the school committee did was look at other places, who, uh, other communities and districts who have policies. It's gone through the process of. Uh, of, um, you know, of of the, any legal challenges mm -hmm. or anything like that, and what it basically is is that uh, this will be service animals. This will not be your pet. Right. So so <laughs> no so no emotional support animals. That's right. No bunnies or anything like that. This will either be dogs or miniature horses, which I 
I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, and, and, and it would be exactly that. It would be a service one. It would be helping the blind, um, you know, anybody who, who needs a support. S someone who has some a sort. disability. Right. We'll, we'll be able to have that animal. Okay. So the, the school committee voted on that, and there is now a policy in place. And um, we'll talk more, I'm sure, about this. So thank you so much, Franklin. Thank you. Mystic the Therapy Dog visited the Beach Street Center this past week and will again on Tuesday, January 28th at 1.15 p.m. His owner spoke with Roger Colton about the visits. Mystic is a therapy dog, so he's just here to provide some comfort and support to anybody who might like a little, a little dog time. We've worked with elementary schoolers and high schoolers, um, so this is our first time working with seniors. He is a therapy dog through the Dog Bones program, which is, let me, I have to think, I have to read it. It's, it's um, Dogs Building Opportunities for Nurturing and Emotional Support, Dog Bones. Um, and therapy dogs are, uh, dogs who are comfortable around people who like getting attention and uh, they're not um, service dogs per se they're not geared towards one particular person but they're geared towards many people and uh, you can kind of you know often when you see a dog that's working it will say on their vest you know please do not pet I'm working or something like that whereas mystics vest says ask to pet me I'm friendly so his job is really um, to let people so, huh? pet him and give him some attention and get a little bit of um, you know the comfort that comes from from petting and interacting with the dog I think that recently now with the focus on um, wellness in just kind of day-to-day -day life and and different learning different strategies for um, handling stress, um, it's become <laughs> more clear that dogs are a nice a way to relieve stress and um, kind of adds to You're people's perfect. general feelings of wellness. I wouldn't know so much about the history of Therapy Dog, but just the current, um, kind of the current um, trend towards more and Therapy Dogs becoming more and more a piece of different organizations and institutions. And now it's time for Chet Messer's scoreboard. In Marotta ice hockey, the boys defeated Stoneham this week 3 to nothing, and now have a record of six wins, three losses, and two ties. They remain in fourth place in the Liberty Division with a record of 3-3-1. Three, three, and one. The girls ice hockey team defeated Watertown 6 to nothing in the past week for their eighth win. Belmont remains in fourth place in the Middlesex Liberty Division. In the Globe Top 20, they were 18th last week and now have moved up to number 12. In Marotta basketball, the girls lost two consecutive games to Woburn and Lexington. They are now tied for third place with Arlington in the Middlesex Liberty Division. Marotta boys basketball continues to roll with the defeat of Lexington at Lexington by the lopsided score of 73-48. They remain in first place in the Middlesex Liberty Division and in the Globe Top 20 are now ranked number 16. The boys and girls alpine skiing team from Belmont is competing weekly with six other teams. The teams are from Acton Boxborough, Bromfield, Chelmsford, Groton Dunstable, Newton South and Westfoot Academy. I will have more about the ski team's efforts at Neshoba Valley each week in an upcoming report. And now it's time for your community calendar. The League of Women Voters will hold its annual winter luncheon on Monday, January 27th at noon at Pateau in Belmont Center. 
This year, the speaker is Tina Cassidy, former journalist at the Boston Globe and author of Mr. President, How Long Must, Must We Wait? Alice Paul, Woodrow Wilson, and the Fight for the Right to Vote. You can buy your tickets on the League of Women Voters website. Thrilled to share readings with your child, the Belmont Public Library hosts a parent-child book club for children in grades 3 to 6 and their parents or other special adult on Wednesday, January 29th at 6.30 p.m. This month's title is The Ghost Collector by Allison Mills. Registration is required through belmontpubliclibrary.net or by calling the Children's Room at 617-993-2880. Belmont Books hosts a screening of Suppressed, a film from Brave New World Films about voter suppression in Georgia on Thursday, January 30th at 7 p.m. Admission is free, but attendance is limited to 50 to ensure an enjoyable experience for all and to facilitate the discussion afterward. This screening is co-sponsored with the League of Women Voters. More info at belmontbooks.com. Next Friday is Friday Opera Club at the Beach Street Center. Join Jose Rodriguez at 1 p.m. for a screening of Georges Bizet's somewhat neglected masterpiece, Le Péchu de Pearl, or The Pearl Fishers. Set in exotic Sri Lanka, this opera is full of gorgeous music. You will watch a version of the opera from a recent Metropolitan Opera production. Nature's glory presents us with a breathtaking array of patterns, colors, and textures. The Belmont Gallery of Art is asking artists to submit work in a variety of 2 and 3D media that celebrates and is inspired by the beauty and design found in our natural world. Please send them up to three submissions directly to admin at belmontgallery.org. More info on their website, belmontgallery.org. Also, join the Belmont Gallery of Art on Sunday, February 2nd at 1 p.m. for the screening of Faces, Places, the Academy Award-nominated film featuring the late French director Agnès Varda and photographer and muralist J.R. as they journey through rural France creating portraits of people they meet and forming an unlikely friendship. This movie won L'Oeil d'O Award at Cannes. That's it for this week. If you want to see your events featured on the community calendar, please email your info to fred at belmontmedia.org. We're finishing the show with a programming update for your Belmont Media Center channels. Be sure to watch. Well, that's all for this week. I'm Mike Crowley. You've been watching the Belmont Journal. We'll see you next time.